Get ready for a glimpse into the future of naval warfare as the United States sets sail on the construction of its fourth state-of-the-art aircraft carrier, fully equipped with the latest weaponry. It is the most technologically advanced warship ever built. In this video, we'll be showcasing the incredible armaments of this aircraft carrier, as well as cutting-edge technologies of the future such as laser weaponry and its intriguing alternatives. We'll also take a look at what else is included in an aircraft carrier strike group. So sit back, get comfortable, hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. The steel cutting ceremony took place at the shipyard of Huntington Ingalls Industries in Newport News, marking the start of construction of the fourth next-generation Gerald Ford-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. According to Navy recognition, this ship will be the second in the series to be built entirely using digital designs and procedures. The Doris Miller is scheduled to be laid down in 2026, and the U.S. Navy will take delivery of the ship in 2032. The new aircraft carrier has a flight deck length of almost 1,100 feet and a maximum width of 256 feet. It is equipped with two nuclear reactors and can reach speeds of over 30 knots. The crew consists of 508 officers and 3,789 sailors, as well as approximately 2,600 aviation crew. One major difference between the new ships and the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers is the use of electromagnetic catapults, emails. Compared to traditional steam devices, emails provide a greater impulse thrust while reducing the overall weight of the device. Emails allows for an increase in the intensity of aircraft flights. For Gerald Ford class ships, it is stated at the level of 160 aircraft launches per day, with the possibility of peak loads up to 220 aircraft launches. The capabilities of Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are limited to 120 aircraft launches per day. To provide its own defense, the aircraft carrier is armed with multiple anti-aircraft missile systems, including two RIM-162 ESSM and RIM-116 RAM launchers, as well as three Phalanx CIW's artillery systems and four 12.7mm machine guns. But what else can they use for defense? Let's take this topic to the next level and talk about such development as laser weapons. American military officials are reportedly developing cutting-edge laser weapons to compete with Russia and China's advances in armament. Their main advantage is the ability to destroy hypersonic missiles in mid-air. The new technology will reportedly use nuclear energy, which is said to render Russian hypersonic missile complexes like Kinjal and Zircon as well as the Chinese anti-ballistic missile systems, DF-21 and DF-26, helpless. Furthermore, these weapons don't require ammunition, providing ships equipped with such lasers with nearly unlimited firing capabilities. Previously, the U.S. actively tested lower-powered lasers capable of easily destroying drones. However, American efforts are now focused on developing more powerful weapons, as noted by Admiral Michael Gilday, Chief of Naval Operations, in a statement to CNN. Currently, the U.S. fleet has several ships equipped with similar-powered lasers, including the most potent gun mounted on the Zumwalt-class destroyer, with an estimated power of 150 kilowatt. However, the U.S. Army is now developing systems with a power output of 300 kilowatt. General Atomics is tasked with the development of these systems. Previously, the company developed a prototype electromagnetic gun for the U.S. Navy but the military eventually abandoned the project. For some time now, the U.S. has been testing its most advanced military technologies on its ships. In December 2021, the U.S. Navy tested the LWSD MK2 Mod Zero laser weapon in the Gulf of Aden. The laser gun on board the USS Portland demonstrated successful destruction of a floating target. Today, this technology is used to combat drones, boats, and cruise missiles. There is also an interesting alternative to the laser, the railgun. It is a powerful electromagnetic system capable of accelerating projectiles up to 6 Mach, about 4,500 miles an hour, and firing them up to 125 miles. The railgun program was conducted for 16 years and was led by BAE Systems and General Atomics, who created their own demonstrators. The minimum estimated cost of the program is $500 million. Although it was conducted under different programs, so it's difficult to determine the exact cost. The railgun was meant to be installed on the Zumwalt-class stealth destroyers, which have a diesel gas turbine generator with a power output of 78 megawatt. 
and whose power is distributed to all systems on the ship. Although the program was terminated, it still yielded positive results. Specifically, the HVP hypervelocity projectile, a high-speed projectile designed for the railgun. It can be fired at up to 3 Mach, about 2300 miles per hour, from conventional naval guns. But let's get back to the aircraft carrier. It can carry up to 90 aircraft, including the FA-18 EF Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, C-2 Greyhound, E-2 Hawkeye, F-35 Lightning II, Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The aircraft carrier strike group includes not only the carrier itself, but also other naval vessels armed with cruise missiles. Let's take a closer look at them. Ticonderoga-class missile cruisers, widely known as the Aegis Cruiser, due to its technologically advanced Aegis combat management system, the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser is perhaps the most recognizable surface combatant in the U.S. Navy inventory. The heart of Aegis is the SPY-1A radar. Two paired phased array radars automatically detect and track air contacts to beyond 200 miles. The Aegis system was developed to counter the serious air and missile threat that Soviet air and naval forces posed to U.S. carrier battle groups and other task forces. With Ticonderoga-class cruisers in company, battle group commanders had weapons that could deal comprehensively with massed missile attacks, and ships could act as effective anti-air warfare command and control platforms during an engagement at sea. The class uses passive phased array radar and was originally planned as a class of destroyers. However, the increased combat capability offered by the Aegis combat system and the AN SPY-1 radar system, together with the capability of operating as a flagship, were used to justify the change of the classification from DDG, Guided Missile Destroyer, to CG, Guided Missile Cruiser, shortly before the keels were laid down for Ticonderoga and Yorktown. Arleigh Burke Class Destroyers The Arleigh Burke Class Destroyers are the U.S. Navy's most powerful destroyer fleet. These highly capable multi-mission ships conduct a variety of operations, from peacetime presence to national security. Armor is placed around vital combat systems and machinery spaces. Acoustic, infrared, and radar signatures have been reduced, and vital shipboard systems are hardened against electromagnetic pulse and overpressure damage. In addition, a collective protection system guards against nuclear, chemical, and biological agents. The unique design engineering approach injected fleet input into the development process before construction began and shaped every element of the ship's systems and spaces to meet future requirements. Each LPD consists of 210 units built utilizing modular construction techniques. Each unit is extensively pre-outfitted with piping, electrical, machinery, and ventilation systems, along with many pieces of equipment prior to launch. And also, the Aircraft Carrier Strike Group includes nuclear-powered submarines armed with cruise missiles. That is all for today. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative and entertaining. If you liked what you saw, please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. See you soon.